Hey y'all, Noons here. Welcome back to Noons Airborne RC. If it's your first time here, smash that like and subscribe button so you can get notified for future content. And if you're a long time viewer and subscriber, welcome back. Well everybody, we got something not normal on the channel. We know we do a lot of jets, but if everybody's watching this channel, you know how much I love the Valiant, so I went ahead and upgraded to the 10cc. So let's go ahead and see what we got, but first, let's roll that intro. Welcome back y'all. As you can see by my face, I'm kind of a little bit excited on this. If you watch my channel, you know that I really love the smaller uh, Valiant, the blue guy, what I like to call him. So I went ahead and I upgraded to the Valiant 10cc. This is my first Hangar 9 plane. It is a full balsa uh, ARF build. So basically we're not really building anything, we're just going to be assembling. A little bit on this plane. Uh, the recommended power system for this thing is the E-Flight Power 46 with the 60 amp ESC and I believe it's swinging a 14.8 prop. Don't quote me on that prop size. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for some time, you know I don't do things by the book. So let's go ahead and start off from the front back on what we went ahead and picked up as the accessories for this uh, assembly. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know, I'm not gonna go nitty gritty way deep into each one of these products. We'll be discussing them as we go ahead and install them on the plane. So let's go ahead and start from the front back. First things first is we went ahead and picked up a wood electric prop from Falcon. This is a 12 by eight. Now you might say that's a little small for this build, but like I said, we're not gonna be building it under the recommended specifications. So what's gonna go ahead and be powering this 12 by 8 prop. Well, instead of the Power 46, we're going to be running the Power 52. Now, the recommended uh, power uh, system for this is on a 4S or 5S system. 4S, 4000 is what's most commonly used. We're using the Power 52 because I don't want to go buy new batteries and I got a lot of 6S, 4000s. So we're going to be running this thing on 6S. Now this Power 52 is a 590 kV motor and at a 6S power it's going to be swinging the prop roughly at about 13,500 RPM. Which is quite a bit of power for this plane, but hey, we're going to go ahead and love what it's going to do for us. To go ahead and power the motor, we picked up the Avion uh, 80 amp ESC from Spectrum. I went ahead, I didn't have a preference, well actually my preference for ESCs are castles. I didn't have an extra one laying around, and I went ahead and picked up everything off of one site at one time. So with the Avion 80 amp, we'll be more than enough to go ahead and power the Power 52, and we'll be well within our range within wattage. Now this is the first time I'll be using this, so we'll be learning this together with the forward program and everything. I don't think it's gonna be anything that complicated. Spectrum tries to make it easy for everybody. As far as servos for this, I went ahead and I picked up these. These are the A6380s. These are from Horizon Hobby. Now these Spectrum uh, uh, standard size receivers, they're only about 30 bucks. One of the reasons why I picked them up, they had more than enough required torque for this plane. They also are metal gear and they're high voltage. I want a high voltage because I'm gonna be running this uh, electronics off of a separate receiver pack. So I, if I do lose the ESC, I will still have power to go ahead and glide the plane down. It's just one of the things I'm gonna go ahead and use this thing because I'm gonna send this bad boy. So on top of this, four receivers. I could have used a six channel receiver for this, no problem, wide the ailerons and wide the flaps. One thing that you'll see in the assembly video uh, later on is on the flaps. The flap servo goes in the same way. It's not uh, mirrored on the wing. So you don't need to worry about reversing or anything. They're going to be traveling the same way. So you can get away with uh, using a six channel receiver. I like to use one channel per surface. That way I can go ahead and sub trim everything, get everything dead even. And if I want to play with things later on with my flight modes, as you've seen in previous videos, and add crow to this thing, even though it's not required, hey, but I like messing around and having fun too. So for the receiver, we went ahead and picked up the AR8360T. It is an AR uh, safe. Uh, forgive me, we did not pick this up. I picked this up a long time ago. This is in one of my uh, electronics boxes. It's what I had. 
and it works for me and it's what's going in the plane. So that's pretty much it for the accessories that's going to go ahead and get into the plane. So now let's go ahead and unbox this bad boy from Hangar 9. Alright y'all, we're back. And if you see this box, this is a six foot table. This box uh, surprised me on how small of a box compared to how big of a plane it truly is, how they packaged it. Um, that's one foot right there, two feet. It's about a three foot box for a 69 inch plane. This is how it goes in, it uh, came in. So let's go ahead and take it out. Like I said previously, this is my first Hangar 9 plane. So now I get experience uh, the next echelon of uh, Horizon. So comes nicely packed as you would expect. Wow, they got like no room. Everything's really nicely packed in here. Pretty surprised. All right, so the first thing you got is you got your manual, the Valiant 10cc. And as you can see, it's not like your traditional foamy manual. There are a lot of steps. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and place this off to the side. So we're going to go ahead and work from the box top down so you can exactly see. So the first thing, it looks like it's our elevator. It is sealed in plastic and it looks like they have it with staples to the side of the box right there to keep it from moving around. So we have our elevator assembly uh, folded with tape. Now, so. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Something I like to do with these balsa planes, I don't like to use the X-Acto to cut it. Because what happens if you cut the covering? Uh, they went ahead and they used tape. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my hands to tear it apart. And it was literally that easy. All right. So we do got a little bit of wrinkling. But with the balsa plane, that's going to be natural as you get it. So we're going to go ahead and seal all these down and get all these wrinkles out. These surfaces do come pre-hinged, but you still got to go ahead and glue them. And it looks like they already went ahead and put the holes for us right there for our control horn. Uh, if you never built one of these, um, I built my big horn. We're going to have to line this up and we're going to have to go ahead and cut what we uh, don't need of the coating. And this is going to get epoxied in. Real nice. Like I said, you will get these bubbles and these wrinkles. If it's your first kit, don't be turned off by this. This is by the wood and the um, humidity, you know, shrinking, expanding, shrinking, and expanding. So we'll go ahead and iron those out. We're pretty humid right now. We got the monsoons going in the desert, and I'm sure in the winter I'll have to go ahead and iron out those again. So the next thing we got in our box. Also wrapped and also stapled is our horizontal stabilizer and our rudder. Again, it is taped. We're just going to go ahead and pull it apart. Find our opening. We have our horizontal stab. The coating, the covering is really immaculate. These aren't stickers. This is all coating because you can feel the edge on it. Looks real nice. Uh, got a, as you can see, like this side is perfect. And then you have this side and you've got some imperfections. But I think we'll be able, there's a wrinkle on that one right there. I think we'll be able to iron out most of those. But this one right here will need a lot less uh, ironing than the elevator, that's for sure. And there is the rudder and the holes for the rudder are already taken care of. All right. Go in just like that. So go ahead and move these off to the side. All right, guys, sorry about that. Uh, I had to drop off camera for a little bit. One thing I did notice is I noticed that I only had two um, hinges. 
And what I found out is I actually had four. Two of them were actually pushed in all the way. So I had to use my X-Acto knife and go ahead and pry them out. So that's something, if you guys get this kit, they did not short you, look inside the channels. Now, if it was pushed in on this side all the way, you would know it because you'd hear it rattling around. So just something for you guys to keep in mind. All right, move this over. All right, next thing we have in the box, get rid of the staple, is we got the left wing. Let's go ahead and take it out the bag. And I don't know if this is coming out in the video, everybody. Um, the red on this thing, it's uh, it's very red. Uh, I like it, it's like a sport red. Uh, wing already is complete. Uh, the hinges, <clears throat> we gotta go ahead and epoxy the hinges for the flap and it's got the CA hinges for the aileron. You have your two chutes here for your servo, standard side servo, and your pull through string. Already done. We do have a few wrinkles, uh, like the horizontal stab, nothing big on the balsa plane. Valiant 10cc. All we gotta do to this wing, everybody, is do the hinges for the flap and aileron, drop in our two servos and run our lead and call her done. Um, I'm anticipating uh, for this assembly about five to six hours. That's not including glue time, everybody. Uh, so when you go ahead and you do the CA, I like to wait a little bit, uh, especially with the 30 minute epoxy, I like to wait a whole day, make sure that it cures before I start moving it around. So five, six hours total, not including glue drying time. Right wing, a little bit of ironing will need to happen. You got your two shoots, exact mirror. So let me tell, show you guys about that flap servo. Hopefully y'all can see that. I'm trying to center out as best as I can. You notice the slot for the aileron servo is on the outside. The slot for the aileron servo on this wing is to the outside. But if you notice the flat servos, they both go the same direction. Their slots are both on the right side. And depending on how you look in the wing. And that was done so that way when you hook up your flaps, you don't have that little bit difference. They're gonna move in the same direction. Zero should be zero. You should be able to go ahead and even it out with uh, your linkage. So that's one cool thing that they did about this plane is they thought ahead and made it simple for the builder. Right. And that's it for the top level. We do have our cow right here. Now this is vacuum sealed. I'm not gonna use a knife. I'm gonna go ahead and use my scissors, get it started. I like to keep it new for its main flight. Anything that happens after that, happens after that. Look how pretty that looks. The paint job on it is really nice. I do see some bubbling uh, in the paint. I don't know if that's coming up, those little like fish eyes. That's just from a, a contaminated area while it was either paint or drying. Not a big deal. Made out of fiberglass. That thing is very sporty, very red. Very, very sporty, very red. I don't know. And it, those little dust marks, I don't even really care about them. It's going to add character to it. So, we'll go ahead and we'll set off our cow out of the way. That way it doesn't fall and get damaged or chip. Sorry about the air conditioner, y'all. Arizona, it's hot. And that's what's on the second level. So underneath this paper right here, we got our windows. The windows do not come pre-installed. We'll have to go ahead and cut them out and glue them in ourselves. I like to use E6000. Some people like to use the formula canopy glue. We have our engine box right here for the Power 46. To go ahead and mount in the front. 
And it looks like we got some straps on the inside. We have our wheel pants or wheel skirts. These are also fiberglass. I heard they're painted really nice, so let's go ahead and check it out. Take one of them, and they are painted, and they are fiberglass. That's gonna look real nice. Real, real nice. You put that back in the bag. We got our bag of tidbits right here. And by tidbits, we have our two main wheels. We have our tail wheel. Now this thing comes with two tail wheels, a thinner one and a bigger one. Thinner one if you're on asphalt, the thicker one if you're on the grass. It comes with the fuel tank, your spinner, and all the hardware we're gonna need to complete the build. It also comes with your motor mounts if you're gonna be running this off of a gas engine. Our landing gear, nice strong metal bar, our wing tube, running out of room, so I'll go ahead and place that back in here. We also have our control surfaces, they went ahead and sent us our rods, they are Z bend and clevises on one end, they went ahead and give you everything you need to go ahead and build this plane. Now, if you don't like the Z-Bends, if you really want a no slop, if you do end up having slop, you can go ahead and use clevises on both sides or ball links, which I'm gonna most likely use. And then right here, we have our firewall. It's for the Evolution 10cc, the Power 46, or the Sato. So we're gonna go ahead and place that aside. We got some handy dandy stickers. And we got our fuselage. So let's go ahead and take the fuselage out and let's see what we got. All right. Comes nicely packaged. Let's go ahead and get rid of this box. Nice and neatly packaged. Rubber band on the back. Go ahead and take that off. And this is exactly the way y'all are gonna get it too if you guys get this. I haven't yet. This is the first time I'm seeing it, just like everybody else. Real nice. The red, it it's very vibrant, pops real good. A few bubbles here and there. But like I said, that's to be expected to get all nice and stretched out, get it looking all pretty. So we got everything. Everything's already pre-slotted, cleaned off, ready for our hardware. We have our holes pre-drilled for our landing gear. We do have an access hatch up on top right here to go ahead and get to the wing connectors receiver, install the servos, or whatever we have to get in there. We've got a nice handy hatch there. We also have the front hatch here where we'll slip in our battery. Before we do that, we have our plain firewall. Um, also, they thought of everything because they built this off of the Evolution 10cc, is they have this cutout right here for your muffler, so it can go ahead and exhaust out. One other cool thing about it is if you're running a uh, electric setup, is you can put your ESC right through here in this slot so it gets all that airflow so it cools down the plane. Now those are just little things that I know about this plane. I don't know everything about it, but as we uh, assemble this thing, we're going to dissect it. So this hatch right here, uh, it's held in magnetically. And um, on the angle, the thrust angle, y'all, I wouldn't worry about that. If you look at the hatch, they already got that for you right there. So let's go ahead, open this up, see how hard it is to take off. Oh, it's not that bad. Not that bad at all. So we got two pins in the front. It looks like we got two magnets on the bottom 
nothing up here on the top, which is kind of nice when you think about it in that way. That way you don't have to pry. And the wind will keep this thing on, so which two are two slots. That's it. Take it off. Too easy. The magnets I did notice, they have an indent here on this magnet and a little nipple sticking out here. So that's what actually lines up your uh, canopy. Get a good look on the inside. Plenty of room for a battery, everybody. Plenty of room down here for your ESC. All your servos and everything. Let's go ahead and you know what? I'm not even gonna sit there. Yeah, let's go ahead and get one side at least off. And with this hatch, everybody, it's a turn screw. That's how it uh, holds on. So let's go ahead. Remember, don't use an exacto. Don't do what I'm doing. Right? Tongue on the front, screw in the back. And we have everything for our screws. So this is for your elevator. This one right here is going to be for your rudder. This one right here will be if you're running a gas engine. This one right here will be for your throttle. And uh, your uh, other servers will be in the wings. And that's pretty much it. So on this build right here, before you do anything, um, I learned from my club president a few tricks of the trade. When it comes to planes, uh, I take into account everything that he pretty much says uh, on it. Now, I don't do exactly what he says to do or how to do it. I will throw on my own little um, curveballs, but they seem to work so far. So before we do anything on this, I'm going to be getting the ceiling iron. You'll see in the up and coming videos, I will take a ceiling iron. I'm going to seal all around this window and all of the seams. Then after that, I will go ahead and tighten up the plane. Then we're going to go ahead and assemble it. Um, I was thinking about doing an assembly video on this, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to we'll go ahead and wait and see. Well, y'all, hopefully y'all enjoyed this unboxing video. Uh, been uh, This thing's not going to take too long to build, about five to six hours. Um, complete, not including uh, drying time. So I was thinking about, like I said earlier, making a building video on this and assembling it. But there's so many of them out there. Um, I'm pretty sure you can watch one of their videos and get the gist of it. What I will be doing is I'll be doing a highlight video on this. I'm going to go ahead and give that a try and see if everybody likes it. I don't know if everybody likes seeing the step-by-step-by-step-by-step by step by step by step process or if it's just too time-consuming. I've been looking at my analytics a little bit. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and do a highlight video. I'm going to go ahead and build it, and I'm going to do a video and show you what I did and things that I have changed. So stay tuned. More up and coming. Hopefully, y'all are enjoying the uh, build videos I've been putting out with the uh, Nova Jet Super Viper. Taking a long time to get that video edited, and I'm going to release them as they go. So once again, thanks again for watching. If it's your first time, smash that like and subscribe button. Do all the things. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned, y'all. Noon's out. Get some.